Hi, everybody, and welcome back to a brand spanking new episode of The Frost Bite. With me, your hostess with the mostest, your bestiest, bestie who's a bestie, the cringiest cross-dresser on YouTube, the one, the only, the incomparable Vivian Frost, back here talking about, you might be wondering, why am, I, why am I in North Dakota with this atrocity on native land behind me? Well, there's this concept online called Mount Rushmore, and what that means is, you know, what is your Mount Rushmore? I hear it often in wrestling circles, like, who's, on, who's your Mount Rushmore fucking wrestlers? Hulk Hogan's not on it because he's a fucking dick. Anyway, besides the point, tonight I'm going to tell you what I think are my, what would my Mount Rushmore of um, film directors would be, but let me, let me be, let me become a little tourist here. I'm shrinking, oh my god, look at me, I'm so tidy on Twitch. <laughs> Sorry, no weed tonight, oh yeah, you know, that's going to be after this, but uh, the wine is flowing. So, film directors, you know, if I, if I had to pick, this is what I'm doing, literally, I'm picking what I, who I think are the four greatest film directors of all time. Now, this is really fucking hard. Your list is going to be different from mine. That's totally fine. But I want to give a justification for each one. So if you don't like it, sound off in the fucking comments, boys and girls. Let me know why, you know, what did I do wrong, in, according to you. But I'm going to give you a justification for each one that I think is, after debating it for a good 24 hours, in my teeny tiny little dinosaur brain, this is what I came up with. So... George Washington, the first president. I, uh, usually the first spot on Mount Rushmore is kind of like who you think is the greatest. So who do I think the greatest film director of all time is? Well, it goes without question. It's Steven Spielberg. Uh, you know, now I, again, I'm a child of the 80s. Uh, Spielberg, he made the greatest movie of all time in Jaws. Then he made Raiders. I mean, you know, aside from Kingdom of the Crystal Skull and War Horse. Yeah, aside from those two, and West Side Story, let's not count those three, okay? Let's just forget those ever existed. Schindler's List, Saving Private Ryan, Ready Player One. He is the director that every that changed cinema forever. He gave us the blockbuster. And as a director, he loves reflections. Watch a Spielberg movie and be sure to let me know how many reflection shots you see. That's his one of his biggest tropes. There's always a couple of them in every fucking movie. But Spielberg is the goat of directors. Now, are there directors, I think, who are technically better at the craft than him? Hmm, a few. However, no director, I think, is more influential in the grand scope of the field of film directing than Steven Spielberg, to be perfectly honest. If you really want to break it down, yeah, you can say, oh, so-and-so and so-and-so, I don't want to say any names as we're going through these uh, heads over here, these big fucking heads behind me. But yeah, Spielberg, he's the GOAT. I think that, I think it's a solid argument. I really think you can't, I mean, you can debate it, absolutely, and, you know, there's no right answer, but... Modern cinema is what it is because of Steven Spielberg. He is a milestone of film directors. Oh, you know, and like, and you know, he was the ones that influenced him led to him, but he is the one who did it first in terms of the blockbuster. And you know, this, you know, every director has their style, but I mean, Spielberg, he's just iconic. It's just you can't get past it. He has to, no matter who you have on your route, much more. If you're talking about film directors, you have to have. Steven Spielberg. But who's next, Viv? Oh, so glad you asked. I'm going with Akira Kurosawa. Uh, now, oh, well, he, you know, Spielberg was influenced by him. He was. But if you look at Akira Kurosawa's work in the time he was doing it, going back to Seven Samurai, Yojimbo, Ran, The Hidden Fortress, George Lucas, I'm looking at you, is the reason we got fucking Star Wars. Uh, in terms, you know, Spielberg is probably, you know, I guess the most iconic, well-known, and one of the best that ever lived bar none, but Akira Kurosawa is absolutely one of the most influential. Uh, if you look back at who influenced Spielberg, Kubrick, he's not on my Mount Rushmore. Again, this is hard. Uh, Carpenter, I love, Carpenter's probably my favorite director, but he's not on my Mount Rushmore because you have to really, you really have to think about it and your favorite might not be on it because you got to think about the contribution to cinema. And that's why I'm dressed more, you know, prissy with the tie and everything. This is film historian Vivian, Vivian Frost here for you tonight. So Akira Kurosawa. Uh, I mean, Seven Samurai is looked upon as one of the greatest films ever made. Uh, back in the day, you know, back, you know, you know uh, Ran, Throne of Blood. You have to, if, you, if you've never seen a Kurosawa film, do yourself a favor. It's, and if you're looking at it from a directing standpoint, phenomenal, iconic. The cinematography in a Kurosawa film is second to none. You can see the influence that he had through practically every single director that came after him. And that's why... He's on here. This is like the influential pick. Like, he is the one that influenced every director on this list and pretty much every director that came after him. Iconic, deservedly placed on my Mount Rushmore of film directors. Who's next, Viv? Thanks for asking down there. Uh, that would be Quentin Tarantino. 
Now, what, what, really? Really? Over Carpenter and Kubrick? And yeah, because what Spielberg did with Jaws, Tarantino brought the excitement and the kineticism back to the back to movies. Honestly, there was nothing like Pulp Fiction, Reservoir Dogs. Pulp Fiction was the big one that really put him on the public's map. But there's nothing like a Tarantino film. You can see it, you can tell it a mile away. You can, from the dialogue, you know it. He is, he is the greatest writer slash director combo that ever lived. That's a big reason why he's on here because he understands writing. He understands so many aspects about film that it's a shame that, you know, I don't think, he, I think he's gonna make another film. He, he says he's gonna stop after 10. He's gonna make another one. There's gonna be 11, at least. I, you know, if he sticks to it, I applaud him for sticking to it. But come on, Quentin, we don't stop. Keep fucking going. He's iconic. He doesn't have a bad film in his oeuvre. He's fantastic. Dialogue is second to none. Tarantino absolutely deserves to be on here for his contribution to cinema. He he is the he is the modern director who keeps it old school with his love for all these films. You know, he thinks Psycho 2 is better than Psycho. I don't share that opinion, but Psycho 2 is goddamn good. If you've never seen it, you need to check it out. But Tarantino deservedly needs to be on here. Uh, I think his impact in modern cinema is, like I said, honestly second to none. I mean, you know, Spielberg, you know, and Ridley Scott, one of my favorite directors of all time, Blade Runner Alien, legend. He's not on here because, because I mean, that dude fell off. Ridley, the, the 80s Ridley Scott is not modern Ridley Scott, and that's a goddamn shame. Seriously. But yeah, Tarantino. So who, drum roll please... Who takes the last spot on my Mount Rushmore in terms of directing? This is the one vanity pick that I allow myself, but I got a good justification for it. And my Lincoln of film directors on my Mount Rushmore is David Lynch. A, the hair. Best hair of any director that ever lived. Kidding aside, David Lynch proved that you, there is no mold for film. He proves that you can make a racer head and... I mean, need I say more if you've seen fucking Eraserhead? David Lynch is an iconic director. I love his stuff. And again, this is my favorite. This is my bias pick. But I do think he deserves to be on here because of his... the contra Because of Lynch, we have more surrealist type cinema. And you could argue that uh, Alejandro... Uh, the wine is fucking with my memory. Oh, God. He was going to do Dune. Oh, my God. I can't think of his fucking name. Full name. Uh, you know, him and David Lynch kind of like there. You might put... You might want to say him instead of Lynch. But Alejandro never had the mainstream. He's that sub level. He's that like third level of the film director iceberg. If you can understand what I'm saying, David Lynch is a surrealist, you know, for lack of a better word, cuckoo filmmaker. And his directing is it, it's simple but complex at the same time. And no other director can really say that. Well, let me rephrase that. Very few directors can say that. But nobody does it better than Monsieur Lynch. And he gave us Twin Peaks, the greatest TV series that ever. Lived and the greatest episode of television ever in Twin Peaks season three episode the atomic bomb one was that episode five six or seven somewhere around there best episode of television ever it's really awesome to watch when you're fucking stoned so anyway there's my Mount Rushmore of film directors let me enlarge uh, let me see let me let me get my computer to work enhance there we go see that's a, it, it it does work super troopers enhance there we go all right so by now you should be subscribing right here liking it this uh or subscribing right here let me know what's up in the comments and this is a video that youtube thinks you should watch based on all the other weird freaky shit that you watch that you think nobody knows about but the algorithm knows let me know what this video is down in the comments smash my like button and all that fun shit and until next time kiddos stay fucking frosty